Okay, this is uh, for uh, UK owners who have got their cars laid up uh, in lockdown at the moment. And it's to show you how to um, make basically the most basic charger and discharger setup. Um, and you can see the components uh, that I've got on the desk here, bench here. I make no claims for uh, professionalism of this video. And there are a few basic things you need to be very careful of. Obviously, it's high voltage in the back of the inside, so you've got to be careful. <coughs> First thing you need is a pair of these or something similar, rubber gloves. If you're fiddling around, it's always good practice to have these on. And obviously, when you're actually working on the car, make sure the IMA battery uh, main switch is in the off position. <coughs> um, so, with that in bearing all that in mind so let's have a look at how to make a simple charger first of all so i'll put some of these pieces out of the way so the first thing you're going to want to order is two of these and these are the apc 35 350 350 milliamp led uh, drivers they're 100 volts output each and we're going to put the outputs in series and the inputs in parallel and then you want one of these which is a 12 volt dc constant voltage uh, driver this is for the fan battery fan so whenever you're charging the car the battery fan needs to be running doesn't matter about when you're discharging but whenever you're charging the car the battery fan should be running so basically you get these three supplies from your favorite uh, electronics supplier and you uh, lay them out however you want to lay them out mount them on some sort of board whatever you want to do <coughs> and then the inputs the mains inputs you connect all of these in parallel so that's blue to blue brown to brown and then off to a standard 13 amp uh, uk plug okay so that's straightforward so you'll have three wires there uh, for each color bonded together and then off to the plug so you'll have three lives and three neutrals so whenever they're plugged in obviously all three of these are working so we'll deal with the high voltage supplies first so the outputs of these you have uh, black red black red so what you want to want to do is you want to connect the red of one to the black of the other for just one pair and then the other two they become your output leads that go to the battery so have your positive output lead and then you have your negative output lead so these are going to be connected in series okay these are isolated supplies so it doesn't matter what we do at the end here okay so that's the HV that's easy so actually connecting the high voltage to the pack what I generally use is uh, well, you can either bolt them on, but you can either. But these are quite useful. These are very nice, small little insulated uh, crocodile clips, uh, and these are quite good. Now, if you get one of these sort of short lengths from eBay like this with two crocodile clips on the end, you can just snip this here in the middle, and then you have two handy uh, pairs of crocodile clips because you'll need two pairs. Uh, you'll need a pair for the charger and a pair for the discharger, so you might as well do that. So uh, let's imagine you've just got one pair here. So I'll show you where the mains high volt, sorry, the uh, DC high voltage connects to the battery. So remember, this is the uh, two outputs from here. So we've got the uh, two connected in series, and then we've got the positive and negative output. So you've got a red and a black, and we go over to our IMA battery, which is here. And you can see this is the end of a high, an IMA battery. It may be slightly tricky to see. So imagine this is the back of the car at this end here. This is the front of the car at this end here. You have to squeeze your hand down between the DC to DC converter and the end of the switchboard here. So obviously make sure it's turned off. Um, so this is the connector we're interested in here uh, for the positive. So it's just a little piece of exposed uh, metal here. Or if you want to, you can use a standard quarter inch uh, spade terminal here, and like adapter. So you can pull this one off. There's a little nib that has to be pressed in for you to be able to pull this off. It can be really stiff as well. Sometimes you'll have to put a screwdriver from down from the top, insulated of course, to try and plop it off. But I, if you're using the crocodile clips, the easiest way is just with one of these. So you just clip that onto an exposed bit of metal there, and that's your positive connection. Okay, that's easy. Okay, but the only difficulty is getting your hand down there. Make sure you've got your gloves on. So the negative is straightforward. The negative is on the top of the battery here, this terminal here, and you can just wedge the crocodile clip down the side of one of these connectors here. So that's your negative. So once you've got everything else wired up, you would just turn the battery on and then plug in your charger and it would charge. That's that part. So that's the high voltage side. So let's look at the low voltage side. So the low voltage side here, we have the uh, um, 12 volt fan power supply. Again, this has just got straightforward positive and negative. Um, so what I would do for this, because you probably want to make it sort of semi-removable, I'm just going to turn the battery round. 
So at this side here, you can see we have the fan, we have a wire here. You can pull this back, strip this piece of uh, connection back here, and uh, then connect the uh, red and black wires to the appropriate wires here. And uh, I've forgotten off the top of my head which one is positive and which one is, is negative on the on the fan here. But it, uh, if you get it the wrong way around, it just won't work. So I would put a terminal block in here and uh, then just put these wires into the terminal block so that you can connect to the fan. That's probably the easiest way to do that. So that's your fan. So that's the 12 volt supply for the fan. I will put in the video comments which is the correct blue and out of the blue and black. I can't remember the top of my head. It's probably red to blue and black to black, but it may not be. I'll check that. It doesn't matter particularly. So that's the high voltage charging side. So what you do is you would charge the pack for minimum of 24 hours before you even contemplate doing a discharge. That will bring all the cells up to full and you go from there. So let's look at the discharger. So we'll just go back over here. And this is really high tech as you can see. This is just a standard 240 volt uh, incandescent bulb, um, 60 watts uh, in a baton holder. And obviously all you're gonna do is you're gonna use our other pair of uh, saved um, crocodile clips. And basically you're going to extend this wire with a piece of main flex you've got at home so you've got basically a bulb with two wires on and two clips on and that clips to exactly the same positions as you saw the charger clips to <clears throat> so when you've finished the charging phase you would turn the pack off and then you would clip these clips to the same positions as the charger had previously been attached to and then you would when you turn the main switch back on the bulb would illuminate uh, illuminate and that's it. And you just leave the charger discharger connected basically until the bulb goes out. And that might take 24 hours or longer depending on how good your battery is and how charged it up it is. But you should always do a charge before you do a discharge. So basically then you're going to do several cycles of this progress process. Charge first, then discharge, then charge again, then discharge, and finally charge again. I'd recommend um, sort of like five stages. Charge, then discharge charge then discharge and then finally charge again and you'll find your battery will really recover quite remarkably after this process it really is quite good so that's what i do and that's what i do with packs as soon as i get them just to see if they can be recovered is to try that process so what you can do is you can uh, if you want to be slightly more high tech you can put your um charger charger modules and your bulb into some sort of box and i usually have a switch on the front of these which has like a charge and discharge position which just swaps over from the bulb to the chargers to the led drivers means you only need one connection to the battery and you can buy the uh, cases uh, again from your favorite electrical supplier so the key things to remember then are Safety first, make sure you've got your marigolds on, make sure the switch is in the off position before you start messing around with it. It's a pain in the neck to get your hands down here. Um, but after you've managed to sort all that out, all you actually need, two 350 milliamp drivers for the high voltage side, one one amp driver, 12 volt DC one amp driver for the fan side. Now, if you've got any um, 12 volt wall warts hanging around, just means standard 12 volt adapters of at least nine to 12 volts output at one amp current. Uh, there'll be millions of those probably around your house kicking around for old router power supplies or whatever. Then you can use one of those just as easy as you can use one of these, as long as it's a, at least capable of one amp output and it's a, a DC supply of at least nine volts. Uh, it's not super critical, so you don't have to buy one of these. If you've got some wall warts, these are the, these are the two ones that you're probably more likely to, you will have to buy that's more, rather more specialized now a constant current output uh, which means that they're not going to overcharge the battery so just to recap then we've got our 60 watt incandescent bulb and i don't mean a cfl or led thing this is a proper old school gets bloody hot 60 watt bulb good thing about this is if you part the, put this inside the car on a nice piece of wooden batten so it doesn't fall over sitting in the back of the car then uh, you can see it from the house so you can see when it's time to go out and flip over from charging to discharging or whatever uh, because obviously if you've got the nice red glow in the back of your car you can tell that something's happening Right, so that's about it. So obviously care, take care, and I hope you're okay, all okay during the lockdown. Um, I do sell them obviously ready built, but the, you know, they're not cheap because obviously it takes a lot of time to faff around, put them together. Um, but so, you know, it's just as easy probably for you to make your own in these under these circumstances. So good luck with that. Any questions, put it on the Facebook forum. But remember, everything you could ever need to know about these cars is already on Insight Central. I don't really like duplicating information. Um, but, you know, if needs must, I will do. But so, okay.
Good luck. Look after yourselves during the lockdown. And hopefully we can have a UK insight gathering at some stage once things get back to something like normal.